Okay. So what I wanted to do in this video is uh, talk a little bit about this Apple keyboard, uh, which by a lot of measures is a pretty good keyboard. Um, but I want to talk about something I did that makes the typing experience just a whole lot better. Uh, again, this is not necessarily a bad keyboard, but there are things that you can do with other keyboards uh, that are definitely more ergonomic. So I want to talk about what um, habit I had while typing on this guy um, to then also help explain and motivate what might be better for your wrists. And um, hint, we're going to use programmatic keyboards for this. But first off, uh, let's just talk about the issue with this one. So um, this is a pretty nice keyboard. Um, it sits nice and flat. Uh, you can actually put your hand kind of on it and your hand really can be nice and flat on this keyboard. And there's none of that like wrist movement that's got to go up and stuff. So that's all pretty well and good. The issue kind of is uh, like, what do you do when you actually use a keyboard like this? You put your hands in the center, something around here, and you start typing. And you even got like these little home row nibs that can sort of indicate where your hands ought to be. And what you'll notice is that uh, the hand on the left, this one, um, that one can move its pinky and can comfortably reach all uh, the different buttons. So if I were to keep that closer to the camera there, uh, home row F, put my hand on it, and the pinky can really touch all the buttons there. That's all well and good. But let's now discuss what is happening to the right hand. If I put my right hand on the J, which is the home row nib, uh, you can put it there. And if I see what needs to happen if I wanted to hit enter, like, you would have to stretch that pretty, pretty far. And it gets kind of even worse when you want to hit backspace. So what happens when you're typing? You're keeping your hands kind of in the middle here. And typically what you're not going to do is stretch your pinky all the way like that, because it feels like a very unnatural move. What you're probably going to do instead, or at least that's what I did, is you're going to do this. You're going to angle your wrist to hit the key and then move back. And if you did that with your pinky, that wouldn't require too much of a movement. But if you did that with any of the other fingers, let's say your middle finger, then you're really going to move to that side um, to actually hit the button. And if you do that once in a day, that's fine. But the enter key is a key that you hit often. So that's going to happen a whole lot. And the same with backspace. So you can imagine that you're doing this wrist movement with your right hand all the time to actually hit those buttons that you need and like do that for days and days and years and you're gonna start getting some wrist issues. And uh, that's part of what happens to me. Uh, I do a whole lot of programming, I also do some video editing, uh, but really this was the stuff that was just killing me. So what I wanted to do is I actually wanted to um, fix that. And I was thinking about ways that I might go about it. And Apple allows you to do some configuration that allows you to map keys around. Like you could do some of that. But it's a whole lot easier if you just buy a keyboard that you can program. And that's something I want to show. Now, the keyboard that I'm about to show is the Nufi, Nufi Air. Um, it is a nice keyboard. Um, I th like to think it has a nice sound. There's a bunch of stuff to really like about it. But the thing that I like most about it, and it's not something unique to this keyboard, a bunch of keyboards do that these days. Um, but the thing that makes it unique is that this is actually something you could program. There is some hardware in this device that you could flash. And that also means that you can override what these buttons do. That's something you can totally configure for yourself. And not only that, uh, another thing that's just kind of fun and good to know is that you can flash these devices from the browser these days. We actually have a thing called Web USB, which is a standard. Uh, Chrome supports it pretty well. And there's websites where you just have to visit. And from the website, we can flash this device. And I just want to give a quick demo of that because it's actually pretty darn sweet. So one thing, just for a good measure, uh, this is the keyboard that I'll be talking about. It is the new Fee Air 60 uh, version 2. Like make version 2 is important in this case because otherwise you don't get the programmatic features. Um, the keyboard itself is about $110 plus shipping. So uh, I don't want to suggest it's a cheap device, but it's certainly not the most expensive one either, right? It's still a fair amount of change, but it's uh, definitely one of the cheaper keyboards, actually. But in order to get the flashing to work from the browser, you do need to do one thing at the time of making this recording. And that is that you have to go to this guide that Nufi has. 
Uh, it goes through all the steps, really. Um, you just have to scroll down and download a JSON file. And that JSON file basically just tells the configurator where all the buttons are on the keyboard so we can have a good mapping. Uh, in the future, this won't be needed anymore because um, this vendor is in the process of getting their code submitted such that it's automatically detected. But assuming you've done all that, you can go to this website called useavia.app. Um, you can go to the settings here. From these settings, you can say, well, I want the design tab to be open. That design tab over here is basically the place that will allow you to upload a, a draft definition, as they call it. But basically, that's the JSON file you got to upload. Then the layout is known and defined. And from there, uh, you can go back to this configure tab. You hit this authorize device button once. You then get a pop-up that allows you to say, yes, I want to authorize this device for flashing. This is also from a security point of view, pretty important. Like you don't want the browser to willy nilly flash all of your USB devices. So the fact you got to explicitly give permission here is good. But anyway, you hit connect and then you get this interface that allows you to change what the buttons do. And just to give like the quickest demo, uh, one thing that I could go ahead and do is I can scroll down here and eventually you will notice that there's this backspace key over here. Uh, and what I could go ahead and do is hit caps lock from the interface, hit backspace, and lo and behold, I've just remapped a key. So what that just did is that flashed this uh, keyboard. And that also means that if I ever were to hit uh, caps lock, that then actually the signal that the computer receives is that I hit backspace instead. And similarly, this keyboard was already configured. I've also configured that this uh, shift button over here, uh, that that also triggers uh, enter. So basically what that does is it removes the need for my pink or my hand to really move to the side over here for enter and backspace. And that should seriously reduce this wrist movement, basically. Um, so just to give a very, very quick demo of that, uh, just to show that this actually works. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I have Sublime Text open here and uh, I can type. And if I want to remove these keys, again, my hand is on the caps lock button and I'm hitting backspace. And if I were now to hit shift instead, you can see that I actually hit enter. And you know, that's kind of great. Uh, way less need for me to move my hand in the direction that's uncomfortable. So that's amazing. At this point though, you might think, uh, gee, that sounds good. But Vincent, you just removed the shift key on the left. And that's also a hindrance. It's great that we've moved some keys around, but, but at this point, you might think that if I wanted to use shift, I would have to use the shift that's on the right hand side. And that that's the only shift that I would be able to use right now. Uh, and especially on this keyboard, that would be a bummer because the shift key on this keyboard is like super tiny uh, over here next to the arrow keys. However, uh, there's another trick that you can do. So if we think about a keyboard, like what can you do with it? Well, sometimes you just want to do a key press, right? So Q and W and E, and that's a signal that you can send to the computer. But maybe there's something different that I can do. Like what if I hold a key down and keep it down? Maybe that does something different. Uh, normally the keys that would do this are the uh, command, shift, and those kinds of keys. Like you can have a signal where something is being held down. But technically that also means that uh, I could program, let's say the F key over here, such that if I tap it, it just writes F. But if I hold it down, that then it basically becomes shift. So while F is held down, if I were to hit any other key, it becomes capitalized. I can do the same thing with the other hand, by the way. So the resting position for F um, will be the index finger on the uh, left hand, but uh, the J over here will be the resting position for the right hand. I can also keep that down and then hit any of the other keys and also get capital letters out. Uh, what I'm describing here is something that's known as a home row modification. Uh, if you're doing touch typing, there's this notion of a home row, which is the resting position of your hands. Um, so basically, uh, 
these little marks on your keyboard tell you where your index finger should be and the other positions of your fingers would naturally follow. And the thinking is that if your hands are here anyway and you want to move your hands as little as possible, then why not move Command, Shift, Alt, all those keys on their those buttons, but they trigger when you hold them down. Uh, this leads to some pretty fun stuff. Um, so one thing I can actually do now is I could say uh, hello there. I could hold F down, which is shift. I can move my cursor to the right. And I could then do command C, which would be either hold D down or K, but K is more comfortable. So I could do K and then C to copy and then K and then V to paste. And these are just some small modifications that you're able to do from the VIA app. But hopefully you can imagine that this really opens up the floodgates to all sorts of better experiences with your keyboard. Um, and you don't even have to buy the most expensive ergonomic keyboard to facilitate this. There's lots of providers and brands that integrate with this use VIA thing these days. And it is just a blessing for your wrists. Or at least that's what I've noticed. Now, there are still lots of other keyboards and things you can do that are more ergonomic, and especially in this domain of uh, programmatic keyboards, there's like a lot of nuance and a lot of details and a lot of good design that went into this. But that's kind of something I wanna explore more. And I think that doing that with a stream might be a fun way to share some interesting lessons. Um, doing the streaming thing is definitely new to me, but I do like to think that I have some lessons worth sharing. And if nothing else, um, because of my wrist issues, I ended up buying a whole lot of keyboards in a state of panic. And if I could prevent that to happen from you by just um, teaching you stuff that matters, then I think I'd be doing some good in the world too. So yeah, uh, this is just one keyboard, by the way. I will probably do a follow-up video that sort of goes a bit more in depth on how to program the use via thing. But I hope that people are at least uh, enthusiastic about what you could do with these programmatic keyboards. There's really a lot of stuff to uh, unravel here that's not just... Um, useful for your wrists, but also just plain interesting. Like a lot of design went into some of these things and there's a lot of stuff to unravel. So um, hopefully that sounds interesting. I'll be making more stuff. Thanks for listening and uh, maybe see you around. Like there's cool things we can do with these keyboards.